Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Scott here, and today we're gonna talk about something really cool and new, probably to some of you. It's kind of new to me too. Um, some of you may know that I've already, that I've been getting into astrophotography recently. Um, and I really have been struggling with finding an easy and economical way to process my astro images. There's a ton of videos out there on YouTube that explain how to use Photoshop or PixInsights or some other programs to process the images that you get when you're out shooting deep sky objects. Um, but none of those really translate efficiently to Macintosh as well. Now I am a Windows user, but I have a lot of clients that I work with that are also Mac people. And PixInsight is one that kind of goes both ways, but it's also incredibly expensive. Um, most people that are doing photography anyway and have lenses and cameras um, probably already have Photoshop and Lightroom. But even if you don't and you do own a DSLR, what we're gonna talk about today, you don't really actually even need Photoshop or Lightroom. You can get pretty decent results straight out of this program. And the benefit of this is that it is both Mac and PC. So what are we talking about here? Um, there's a program that I found that I'm actually kind of surprised not a lot of people are talking about online. And that is a program called Cyril, S-I-R-I-L. Uh, and basically what it does is it's an automated way to just sort of ingest all your images, um, get them integrated, and then process them. Um, the processing in it is actually very similar to PixInsight, although it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that PixInsight does, but it is really good, and I find that it's actually better than some of the alternative methods like using Deep Sky Stacker and just Photoshop by itself. So, this is not going to be an episode on how to capture images using your DSLR in the night sky. This is really just gonna be an episode on how to, once you've got the images, how to bring them into your computer or at least uh, organize them in a way that we can then use Serial to automatically process them. So without further ado, let's dive on in and tackle the subject at hand. All right, so I'm opening up Lightroom here and I've gone ahead and already imported all of the data um, that I took a couple of nights ago on the Orion Nebula. So basically what I've done is I've just imported everything, you know, as it was on the cards into this folder here that I labeled M42, which is Messier 42, that's the Orion Nebula. So once I imported all these images into um, this particular folder, um, I also went ahead and subdivided all of the images into their respective folders. So when you take astro photos, you're gonna have four types of data. You're gonna have your light frames, which is the frame that actually captures what you're trying to shoot. You have dark frames, which is basically the exact same thing, just with the lens cap on. You're gonna have bias frames, which is a shot that you take at the same ISO, but at the fastest shutter speed. And then you're probably, if you're a little bit more advanced, you're gonna have something called a flat frame. If you're not sure what that is, look it up. So I have um, about, what is this, 95 total light frames, and then 30 darks and 30 biases. And I've gone ahead and I've just put them into respective folders. Um, You'll also see here that I have a rejects folder and that's basically the next step. Once you get everything kind of organized here, you're gonna have everything in your lights folder. And what I like to do is I like to go through them really quickly and just find any images in this particular set that um, just are kind of unusable. Um, now Cyril, the program that we're gonna use, does have a rejection method, but it just, it's good to just go through your data and find the really hardcore outliers. So where the tracking wasn't that good, where something's completely out of focus, you know, these kinds of things. And I created a folder here called rejects and I've deposited those images into the rejects folder. So reject would be something like this where, you know, the stars are a little out of focus here. This one um, is an example where I rechecked my focus using what's called a Batnov mask. Um, another one here where the tracking wasn't as good. Eh, it's not bad, but you know, I just didn't like it. Um, another focus check. So these images um, I've just gone ahead and just gotten rid of, and I've put them in their reject folder. So again, we have our lights. Let me zoom out here. We have our lights, our dark frames, our biases, and our rejects. Rejects really is, we're not gonna be using that folder, but I thought it pertinent just to include it. So. 
there it is. Um, 88 light frames, 30 darks, and 30 biases. Once you've organized this, um, that's basically it for Lightroom right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to minimize Lightroom. I'm gonna open up my uh, file folder here, and let me bring that over here. I'm gonna go to my photos folders, astrophotography, M42, and oops, let's go back up one. And I'm gonna take my M42 folder and I'm just gonna drag the whole thing onto my desktop. And this is because when we're gonna be using this program called Cyril, Cyril is gonna have to debayer all of the images that you bring in because it's a raw photo from a digital SLR. It uses a, you know, the RGGB color matrix. That's, you know, part of the sensor. And um, the program needs to debayer the image to give you the color data. So that's part of what it's going to do is it's going to have to basically reprocess all the images into a format that it can understand. And when it does that, it's gonna create a lot of extra files that I don't necessarily need. So I'm putting it on the desktop so that I can then delete this whole folder afterwards. I don't need those processed files, each individual one. I don't, just don't need them. So once it gives me the result of the whole integrated image with all of those subsequent images that I've added, I'm just gonna drag this to the trash because I don't need all that. The one thing you need to be careful of here is that you have enough space on your desktop. I like using the desktop because it's the fastest uh, hard drive on my computer. Um, so it should run a little bit quicker because it is writing. So if you're using a external drive, that's not bad, but if you have access to your hard drive on your computer or laptop, you need to make sure that you give it enough space. So I'm shooting with, or I have data here. We just click properties on this. My folder is about 4.34 gigabytes. Now that is going to, mm, it's not gonna double, it's not gonna triple, it's not gonna quadruple, it's not gonna quintuple. It's actually going to be seven times larger than that when we're done. So this should be right about under 50 gigabytes if you do biases, darks, and lights. Now that obviously is gonna depend on how many images you bring in but you wanna make sure you have enough space on your desktop to handle all of this data, otherwise it's just not gonna work. So if I go to my PC, my local disk, my C drive has 285 gigs free. So that's more than enough um, to handle all of the new files that Cyril is gonna create, okay? So we're gonna close that. We have our folder here. And this is where having your data in folders is absolutely essential to this process. So when I open this up, I have to make sure that my lights are in a folder called lights, my darks are in a folder called darks, and my biases are in a folder called biases. This is very important. And if you're using flats, it's in a folder called flats. The reason why that is, is because the program we're using, Cyril, uses a script that is going to identify these folders by these names only. So if you're getting an error immediately after starting the script, you know that this is probably the issue that you, you know, that you don't have your folders organized the right way. It's not going to look at a folder called reject. So this is totally fine to be there. All right. So again, very, very important biases, darks, lights, flats, if you have them. Um, so those four folders there. Once you have everything in the folders, we can go ahead and we can open up Cyril. If you haven't downloaded it yet, um, let's bring this window over here so you can see. I'm literally just at cyril.org slash download. And you can see you have a bunch of OS choices here. So you click on your corresponding OS, download the package, and get it installed on your computer. The download that you get, if you grab it from that particular site, will give you the scripts necessary to process your DSLR images. So it's very important that you get it from there, no other source. It's a free package. You don't have to worry about viruses or anything like that. And I'll put a link in the description below so you can get it from the correct source. So once we have that done, we're gonna open up Serial Control Center here, and we are going to basically tell it where all of our images are. So, at the bottom of this window here, we'll see this uh, current working directory. And we need to change this to where all of our images are. So I'm gonna hit change directory, and then I'm gonna find on the desktop here, my M42 folder. There we go, open, and now Cyril is primed and ready to take a look at our data. Now somebody um, 
added these scripts to Cyril, and you can see there's a bunch of images, or, or sorry, there's a bunch of scripts here that you can choose from. So we're gonna do this basic one, DSLR pre-processing, no flat. So basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna look in all of those folders, it's gonna take the dark frames, the biases, it's gonna combine those, and then it's gonna subtract that noisy data from the light frames and then output an integrated file that we can then process using this program here. I've gone ahead and I've made my own script called DSLR preprocessing no flat dash new um, because the processing one in here, um, the no flat that's here, uh, for some reason doesn't take a look at the biases and darks. So if you want to use the script that I've created, I'll put a link in the description below for that as well. So that's what we're going to use. I'm just going to click no flat new and then Cyril is going to process everything automatically. So you can see right now that it's reading all of the data from each individual raw file and it's going to decode it and then create a what's called a FITS file, F-I-T-S file, that all of these kind of higher end um, astro photography programs can use. Um, so it's basically like a, it's kind of like a raw file for lack of a better term. So this is going to chew on this for about 10 minutes, maybe more, maybe less, depending on what kind of data you're bringing in. So we're just going to let this sit for a little bit and then we'll come back in about 10 minutes. All right, so we're back and Cyril has finished executing its integration of all of the raw files. Um, again, you can see right here, it took about 12 minutes and 55 seconds. Now I've given it quite a bit of data to chew through. Uh, I'm shooting with a 5D Mark IV um, and the images that I'm that I currently have on here were actually shot with this brand new toy here. It's an Apertura um, doublet uh, refractor telescope. Um, it's about $399, uh, really, really cool lens for astrophotography. If you guys wanna see a review of this, drop comments down below. I, I will probably, uh, I might do a review of this if you know there's enough interest. Um, uh, and then the how of how they were shot was using this guy, which is uh, the iOptron Skyguider Pro. Um, so that's basically the gear that we used um, to capture these images. So now that we've got them all stacked, um, oh, and I should say this as a side note too, um, if you go through all of this and you're getting errors um, on certain things, there's a couple things you might wanna check. One is the one that we talked about before, that your folder structure is organized correctly in that you have biases, darks, lights, and uh, flats if you're using flats. Um, the other one is that you need to make sure that Cyril can actually read the raw data from your camera. So if you're shooting with a brand new Canon EOS R or RF or RA or a Nikon Z6 or Z7 or any um, camera that uh, you may be unfamiliar with or is new to you, you probably want to open Cyril Go to file, go to open, and go to one of your light frames. And whoops, let's change the thing here to raw DSLR files. And then just open one of these images up just to see if you can actually read the imagery um, because some of the newer cameras, this isn't even a possibility. It will not read your raw files. And if that is the case, then you need to convert them to a raw format that Cyril can understand. So if that is a problem for you, you can easily just go into Lightroom um, if you have it and you can you know, select all your images, hit export, and where the file format is in, under file settings and export, you can change the format to DNG and then camera raw 11.2 and later, and then uncheck all of this stuff to keep the file sizes small. We don't need any of this data right here. And then hit export um, and do that with all your sets of data. Um, and then when you're finished, again, make sure that they're in the correct folder structure and then Cyril will work no problem. So that's really the only 
like kind of big hiccup that I've noticed um, is that some of the newer cameras, uh, Cyril just can't read the data. And like, especially for you Nikon shooters using Z6s and Z7s, um, maybe even the D850 um, is, it'll read the raw data, or at least it, it thinks that it can read it because Nikon hasn't changed their extensions. It's all just dot NEF. Um, but once it goes to start uh, analyzing for stars, it just says it can't find any. Um, and that's obviously a problem. So make sure that you can actually read the star data or read your raw data first before you even go to this step. And it needs to be DNG. Don't use JPEGs or TIFFs again because the script is very stupid. The script is literally looking for DSLR raw files, not TIFFs and not JPEGs. So you would have to create a new script if you wanted to use TIFFs. So use DNG camera 11.2 or later, and you'll get the exact same result that I have. So now that we have that done, we have some of that demystified, what do we do next? Um, well, typically, if you're using a Deep Sky Stacker on a Windows machine at this point, you would open up the 32-bit TIFF file that DSS outputs into Photoshop, and you would do something called stretching, right? Um, if you've ever done astrophotography before, or maybe you currently are doing astrophotography processing, you know that when that image comes out, you have to open it up in Photoshop or you know some other myriad of other programs to um, get your data. And the images are really dark. Um, and let me show you what I mean by that. So we're gonna go to File, we're gonna go to Open, and we're gonna change this from raw DSLR camera files to FITS files, because that's what uh, Cyril has outputted and that's what we want it to look for. And we're just gonna click on result.fit and open that up. And let's drag these images back over here so we can see, so we have two windows which we're going to be using um, to process and look at the imagery. And you can see that they're very dark. Um, and this is typical of uh, when you stack astrophotography images. Everything that you do is gonna basically start like this. And it's your responsibility now to stretch the histogram to bring out that data. And I found that using Photoshop was just terrible at this. Um, it takes a lot of finesse, and frankly, um, not everyone has the stamina to go through with this. And astrophotography is a fun and should be a rewarding hobby, um, and something that shouldn't take a lot of energy to get through. I mean, we're already spending a lot of time perfecting polar alignment and focusing and finding objects and all this kind of stuff. Why should we make the processing uh, as difficult as that too. Everyone should be able to enjoy this um, without spending an arm and a leg and uh, you know an arm and a leg in terms of time. So Cyril is a way that we can get some really good automatic processing um, that I think is pretty good and hopefully you will find um, that uh, result as well. So we're here, what do we do next? Um, well. Cyril has this really kind of cool algorithm that if you're familiar with PixInsight, something called auto stretch, or if you're a PixInsight user or have used it in the past and got really frustrated, a lot of people talk about the go nuclear button. Um, so to go nuclear with this, we're going to look at our second window that comes up here. And you'll notice that we've split this image into red, green, and blue channels. Um, because it is an RGB image. And right now the view mode is set to linear. So we're gonna change this to auto stretch. And when we do that, Cyril is going to automatically stretch the pixels in the image to give you the best result possible with the data you have. So you can go above this if you want to, which I have done in the past. Um, but most of the time, if you have enough data, uh, good data in equals good data out, you're going to get a result similar to what you see here. Um, the total time that I spent shooting uh, M42 here was about an hour and a half. So there's about 88 images that I was able to capture, and I shot this at ISO 1600 for one minute each at about 360 millimeters. Um, that's, so that's the focal length and the F number on my little doublet here is about 6.3. So if you wanna use an analog for converting for you know a, a camera lens, um, I shot it at about F6.3, ISO 1600, um, 400 millimeters and one minute a piece. So that's the total time for each photo 
all together, it's about an hour and a half, maybe a little less than that because there are some rejections happening in the background with Cyril. Um, it just rejects data that you know is uh, an outlier as well. Um, but essentially, this is the result that we have. So let's let's get a little bit organized here. We're going to move our Serial Control Center thing up here. We are going to make this section a little bigger, and we're going to make this section a little bigger as well, so just so we can see a little bit more detailed view of our. Uh, nebula here in the Orion Nebula and we'll just drag this down so if you're only using one screen this is probably how I would do it um, just kind of make use of the best you know screen real estate that you have I have two monitors so I typically you know have my control center and this window here in one screen and then I have you know this kind of green looking screen right here on my other monitor but whatever works for you. This is essentially how we're gonna do it. So we've basically, we've auto stretched. We can see exactly like the data that we have or you know the, the possibilities um, of what we've captured. Um, and let's just zoom in a little bit here. We'll go to one and a quarter and we'll scroll around here to kind of get this kind of center stage. So already we have a pretty decent result. Um, it's not too noisy. Um, the exposure looks very good. Um, and again, I'm not going to explain how all of this was captured. If you want to learn that, um, leave a comment in the description below. Um, and uh, maybe I'll do a video on how to actually grab these images. But there are plenty of those videos on YouTube already. If you'd like to see me do it, tell me. I'll do it. Um, okay. Um, the first thing we need to do is color calibrate. As you see, um, this image looks very green, and that is typical because there are twice as many um, green photosites as there are red photosites. Um, so for every one red photosite, there's two green, and for every one blue, there's two green. It's RGGB. Uh, that's the arrangement of the pixels here. So it is going to look a little green if you're using a color camera or a color DSLR. So we need to fix that. So the first thing we need to do is um, color calibrate. And if we go up to our serial control center here, right next to scripts, you'll see this area that says image processing. And basically, this is organized in sort of the correct order that you should tackle this. Um, we're going to we're going to do our histogram transformation, which is basically the actual stretch later. But essentially, what you're looking at here is not a stretched image. If I save this, um, it will save looking like this. So we actually need to perform the stretch. This is just a view of the stretch. It's very important. Okay, it's actually not, it's still linear. It's not stretched yet. So before we do that, we're gonna do color correction. So we're gonna go up to image processing, color calibration, and click color calibration. In the black and white window here, we need to pick an area that's dark for our background, and then we need to pick an area that's white for the white balance, essentially. So we're picking an area that should be black, we're picking an area that should be white, okay? So to do that, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna drag a little square in an area that has no stars, um, that is supposed to be dark. And I'm going to come back over to the color calibration window and I'm gonna use current selection. I'm gonna click that box and then I'm gonna click background neutralization. And that should eliminate the kind of offending color from the image. And you can see it did a very good job there. Let's command Z so you can see the before. Pretty good. And we're gonna go forward. Again, that's just image undo and redo is right here on a Mac that's going to be slightly different, but on a PC, um, control Z, control Y. All right, so we have the background neutralized. Now we need to neutralize the white reference, okay? So we'll do the same thing. Can't do it on this color window here. That's just a reference. We need to do it on this window over here. So I'm going to draw a square around the core of Orion's nebula. And I'm, again, I'm going to hit use current selection, and then I'm going to hit apply. Nothing else needed. You don't need to mess around with anything here. Just the defaults. Then we're going to click close. And now you can see the color is essentially calibrated. And that's it for color calibration. So what do we do next? Because um, we're definitely not done. But you can see this is looking very exciting. We have some really good data here. It's looking really cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to image processing. And I'm going to hit remove green noise and then just hit apply. Again, you just use the defaults. That should take care of any green noise we have. We can do this again once we actually stretch it, but it's fine to do it now. Um, all right. So now that we have the color calibration done, 
and um, some green noise eliminated, we are going to actually now stretch this to make the final image actually look like what you see here. Again, this is just a preview. So we're gonna go back to auto stretch down here. We're gonna scroll up to linear and change the view to linear. And then we are going to go to image processing, histogram transformation, and then you see this god awful, I hate teaching curves, I hate learning curves, I hate using curves, but this is essentially what this is. We're not gonna mess with this at all because Cyril has the nuclear button here. And we can actually just click that and have it auto stretch the image perfectly. Now, what we're seeing here uh, doesn't look correct, but that's, don't worry about it. We're gonna hit apply and we're gonna close this. And then in this window, you see that the cut um, slider is kind of over to the left. We're gonna drag that all the way back to the right. And then you can see our image um, looks essentially like it did when we were previewing the auto stretch, okay? So now if we were to save this image, this would be exactly what it would look like, okay? All right, so that's pretty good. Um, let's darken this up a little bit. So we're gonna go back to image processing. We're gonna go to a sign transformation. And with this one, this is another way you can stretch the image, but we're gonna take the black point and we're just gonna drag this all the way over for this particular image. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna alter the black point and make everything just a little darker because obviously the background here is a little bright. Um, we wanna remove, um, or we wanna kinda get that dark sky back to dark sky. Um, and uh, we've already hit apply, so we can close this. Oops, I didn't hit apply. Let's go back to image processing, a sign transformation, black point all the way over, and hit apply. All right, so now that is applied. And you can see that there's a little bit of vignetting here. I was unfortunate to not have my um, do heater um, on my telescope or lens at that night. And we did get a little dew uh, forming on the lens. So um, that is why there's a little bit of vignetting here. Had I had the all the correct equipment, we probably would not have this weird vignetting because this is not supposed to have that. Um, so how do we get rid of this weird vignetting here? Now, typically you might have to buy another package for Photoshop for this if you were using Photoshop. You might have to, you know, grab something called Background Exterminator or, you know, something from Astro Photo Tools, um, some kind of script to get rid of this vignetting. But um, Cyril actually has something almost identical to what PixInsight uses um, for a background extractor. So that's what we're gonna use here. And all right, so we do need to crop this image. So we're gonna crop this image first so that then we can do the background extraction. So we're gonna go to zoom to fit to get it like this. And then in this window here, we are going to drag a crop window like this. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit crop. And that is gonna crop the image a little bit closer. And now we're going to do a background extraction on this. So we're gonna go up to image processing. We're gonna to go to background extraction. And this handy dandy little tool comes up. And we're gonna leave degree order at four. We're gonna samples per line. We're gonna bring that down to 15. And then we're gonna hit generate. And then you can see all of these little green dots everywhere. Now what these green dots are doing is they are gonna be sample boxes. So it's gonna analyze the pixels throughout this entire matrix here and try to figure out what is background and what isn't background. And ideally you shouldn't have any of these green boxes around your target, your subject. So if that is a problem, you can just lower the tolerance here. So I'll bring this down a little bit from 1.0 to point or 0.50 and I'll hit generate again. And you can see that it's going to remove a little bit more. Now you can do this manually by just right clicking on these guys here because I don't wanna grab any nebula. So I'll just kind of eliminate these guys. And if you wanna be absolutely precise, you can zoom in like this and you can right click and you can click again to make a new one because ideally you don't want these um, little sample boxes to be on stars. Um, totally up to you if you wanna be that detailed. We're not gonna worry about that too much. The program does a very good job as is, after you stretch that is. So once you've stretched, you can come up here, samples per line about 15, bring the tolerance down if you need to. And then I'm just gonna hit uh, apply. Here's the after. 
as you can see, let's Command Z or Control Z and do the before. There's the before with the vignetting that unfortunately I was, you know, kind of forced to to eat with um, not having my dew heater. And then there is the after. My background um, kind of vignetting is completely eliminated. So at this particular point, you can do one of two things. You can just save it and you can bring it into Photoshop or you can do another A sign transformation if you want and we'll lower the black point again. So let's see what happens. We can make it a little darker like this. So if you didn't have Photoshop, or didn't want to go into Photoshop, this is basically what I would do to get my image completely done. I'll hit apply, and then we'll go back to image processing, and you can see there's something here called color saturation. So let's do that as well. Again, if you don't want to go to Photoshop, we'll change this to global hue, we'll bring the amount up to 1.0, and hit apply, and this image is basically done. I mean, you don't need to do anything else to this. Let's check it out. This is not a bad result at all. I am extremely happy with how Cyril processed this data. Yeah, it's a little noisy. It's not as sharp, um, but these are the things that we're going to address in Photoshop. Um, there are ways to do this in Cyril, but I just don't find the controls um, as intuitive um, and as simple. You do have to play around with them a little bit. And everything up until this point, we've just been using the defaults, you know, or changing very few of those defaults. So this is basically it. If you never wanted to go into Photoshop and wanted to get Astro Photos, um, you can basically stop right here. I hope you had a good time watching. <laughs> For those of you that want to continue to Photoshop, keep on plugging. If you never want to go and do any other processing, you can just quit right here. This is it. Perfect. All right, so let's, uh, let's bring this back to zoom to fit. And we'll pull this back over here. And the next part of this is bringing this into Photoshop and actually processing it the rest of the way in Photoshop. So we're gonna go back to our control center here. We're gonna go to file. We're gonna hit save as. And we don't wanna save it as a fits because Photoshop can't read fits files. So we're gonna save this as a TIFF. And for the file name, we'll just name this M42, S-I-R-I-L. And then I'm gonna put what I used so I used lights, darks, and biases. And that'll help me figure out exactly what I did. So then we'll hit save and save again. And we're done with Cyril. Easy peasy. Now we have a TIFF file that uh, we can read in Photoshop. All right. So now let's go to Photoshop. We'll open up Photoshop. Open up this image here. Desktop, M42, Cyril. And here's our file, not bad at all. And first let's crop this. So we're gonna do a two by three slash four by six, cause that's how I like to crop my images. And we'll just kind of center this here and we'll kind of bring this in a little bit and bring that in a little bit and kind of move this around to get our, gal our galaxy, our nebula exactly where we want it. And we'll hit return on the screen and there we have it. We've cropped out everything we don't want. We have really nice dust lanes going on there, nice definition. So let's process this image using Photoshop and then be done. So what are we gonna do here? Um, first thing we're gonna do is duplicate the layer. So Command J or Control J on a PC. Um, then we're going to take this layer here. Actually, I'm just gonna type in here um, base image. So you can double click on this and check that out. This one, we're gonna name this ACR because we're gonna go into Adobe Camera Raw right now. So with that layer checked, we're gonna go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And we're gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can see what we're doing. And this, we're going to do a clarity, vibrance, and saturation adjustment. So clarity is gonna go up a little bit. Let's bring this to about 20. And vibrance, let's bring this up to about 20. And saturation, we're gonna bring this up to about 20. And looks pretty good so far. Um, again, if any of this is you know too over the top for you, you can always just back it down. It's just the way I like to process. So we'll hit okay. It's really the only thing we wanna do with this. And there we go, we've got a lot more detail in our dust lanes in the nebula here, 
there's before and after, we'll back back out. And now what we wanna do is I wanna reduce the noise in this image. Um, and to do that, we can use, you know, the Photoshop's noise filters, um, but we don't wanna reduce the noise everywhere. Uh, most of the noise that we see in here, you know, if we zoom in, is this color noise that's sort of just in the background. There's not really any color noise in the lighter areas of this image. They're only really in the darker areas, and that's what we want to address. If I just do a noise reduction over the whole image, everything is gonna get soft. Um, I don't care if the background gets soft because it's black, so who cares? So I only wanna do noise reduction on the black areas or the dark areas, the shadows of the image. So we're gonna try something new here. We're gonna go to select, Actually, uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll do select color range. And then instead of sampled colors, we're gonna do shadows. And you'll see the white areas are the areas that uh, Photoshop is going to select. So we're going to decrease the range here to let's say about 30 and then increase or decrease the fuzziness. Yeah, we'll go right about there and then decrease the range a little bit more. So we'll bring that down about there. And ah, this is what we want right about like that, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, so maybe, I'm trying to look at the pixels here and I'm trying to see, you know, like is it grabbing all of the dark areas or not? Um, so let's just do, let's see what happens if we do 20. Mm, it's maybe too much, let's do 15. That's not bad, we'll do 20. So it's grabbing all of these light areas here and the black areas in the image is, is part that it's just not going to grab. So that's what we're gonna do, range zero, 20%. You could easily do this with luminosity masks if you want to, but that's another thing that I don't really wanna explain. Um, if you're comfortable with using luminosity masks, uh, I would use a darks mask three for this. And once we have that selection, we are going to hit control or command J to put that selection on its own layer. And if we look at our image here, you can see this is what it grabbed. Um, and we're gonna do a noise reduction on this layer. So we're gonna go up to filter, uh, noise, reduce noise. And then what I like to do is just put the strength at 10, preserve details to zero, reduce color noise to 100%, sharpen details to zero, and remove JPEG artifact. Those are the settings that I like to use. And I'm gonna hit okay. And that's gonna run that noise reduction on just this background layer. So when we zoom in here and we turn our noise reduction layer on and off, you can see that we're not losing any sharpness in our nebula, but we are removing all of that unsightly noise from the background only, which is exactly what we want. So this one, we're gonna call our D noise layer. Simple as that. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all of these things together and we're gonna stack everything. So on a PC, this is gonna be Shift, Control, Alt, E, or on a Mac, that's Command, Shift, Option, E, and that's going to stamp visible this layer here and we're gonna call this layer stack. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sharpen it. So Actually, we'll change this to sharpen. And we're gonna go up to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And we're gonna zoom in on this little spot here. Let's zoom in a little bit more so we can see what we're doing. This step will depend entirely on how many pixels you actually have in the image. So if you are starting off with an 80 megapixel image, your numbers are gonna be very different. Um, so the radius here is what's going to determine how you're going to sharpen. So what we're basically want to avoid is this, if your radius is too high, and I've only chosen three here, and you can see I'm already getting these halos. So we wanna lower this significantly until those halos disappear. So I'll just keep tapping my down arrow here to about 1.0, and that's about the limit. I think we can go down even more. I'm gonna just do 0.8, and then I'll keep the amount at 200. Um, the threshold, is going to describe where it's gonna sharpen. So if I keep the threshold at zero, it's gonna sharpen everywhere, including, you can see in here, all of this noise here, uh, that's gonna be amplified. So we wanna increase our threshold to about four or five, and then we're gonna hit okay. And now that's gonna sharpen the entire image. 
And let's see what that looked like. Sharpen before and after, before and after. Pretty good. All right, so we'll zoom back out. Okay, so the next step is to do something called star minimization. And for this particular image, it's probably not a huge deal, but we're gonna do it anyway. Um, if you were shooting a deep sky object like the Andromeda Galaxy or something else that was kind of in the middle of the band of the Milky Way, the, the arm of the Milky Way, you're gonna have many, many, many more stars that might take away from your object that you're trying to showcase. Um, and this one, again, it's not terrible. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna show you how to do a star minimization. And uh, again, there's many ways to do this. This is just the way that I find works for me. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use the color range uh, selection to do that. So with our sharpen layer selected, which has everything, we're gonna go back up to select color range. And from this one, we're going to choose highlights. And the range on this one is gonna go down as well. And oops, we want to, let's increase the fuzziness here. And then we're gonna increase the range until we have most of the stars visible here. So about 20. And then for the fuzziness, we can lower this. And we'll keep going a little bit here with the range. Eh, looks pretty good. We'll do, we'll do 25. And then let's soften this up just a little bit. So we'll do, we'll do the same. We'll do 25 and 25. And then we'll hit OK. Now with this selection, again, we're gonna hit Control or Command J. We're gonna pop that on its own layer. And on this one, we're gonna call this one Star Minimize. So if we turn off all these layers, you'll see that this is what we have. This is the stars that we selected um, with our Highlights tool. And we're gonna click on that. We're gonna to go to Filter, Other, Minimum. And I'm just gonna pick a radius of two. Um, you can see the example that it's given here um, is that the, the, the stars are definitely dimmer. Um, you can play around with this number to get them dimmer if you want or less dim. Um, I'm just gonna go overboard here um, because I always have the ability to lower the opacity of this particular layer. So this is definitely too much minimization, um, but I'm just gonna go to the opacity here and drop this down to let's say 33%. So it's only showing us uh, 33% um, opacity of this particular layer, which is the minimized layer. So if we turn this off, actually, let's go a little higher. Let's go to 50. There's before and there's after. Before and after. That's a little bit too much. So let's do 33. And again, you can use masks with this. You can paint out your nebula with a mask if you wanted to. I'm not gonna, just because it takes a little bit more time. Um, we just wanted to minimize it just a little bit here, and that's good enough for me. All right, um, actually, it's a little, little bit too much. Let's do 25. So there's before and after, before and after. And again, like if you don't mask, you are going to lose a little bit of brightness in your nebula, um, but again, I find that that's okay, at least at this rate. Um, you can spend more time on this. We're not gonna deal with it. All right, so we have our minimizing done. Next. Um, we are going to do another Adobe Camera Raw. So we're gonna stack this one more time. Again, Control, Shift, Alt, E, or Command, Shift, Option, E. And we're gonna label this new layer ACR once again. And with that layer selected, we're gonna go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And we are going to do two things. We're gonna to try to increase the kind of texture of this area here. So we're gonna up the clarity just a little bit. Let's do 10 and then maybe increase the texture a little bit as well. You can go overboard with this if you like. I'm just gonna leave it as those two low numbers there. Um, we can see a preview of this by hitting P in Camera Raw. There's before, uh, after, before, after. And that's all I need to do there. So we'll hit OK. And that's given us a little bit more texture, you know, a little bit more clarity, um, bringing out the dust lanes more. Um, all right. Last thing, or second to last thing before we're finished, we're going to stack this one more time. And for this one, I want to do sort of, I want to get rid of more of the darker areas of this image. Um, this is an optional step. 
um, that's probably better with uh, with the um, luminosity masks, but we'll do it again here. I'm going to go up to select, color range, change highlights to shadows, and the fuzziness here, we're gonna lower this a little bit more. We don't wanna apply this to not, we don't wanna apply this to a lot of stuff. So we're gonna lower this to about, let's just do 10 and hit okay. And then again, Control or Command Z to put whatever that selection was on its own layer. And then we're gonna take this and change the blend mode from normal to subtract. And that is going to darken the background a little bit more. Um, the luminosity masks work better at this. So we're gonna drop the opacity from 100 to about 50. And that's gonna help significantly um, in making sure that it's not too crunchy between our background and our dust lanes. Um, we're approaching that here, but I think the effect is warranted. So we'll just sort of leave it at that. Again, if you don't like it, you can always drop this down a little bit more, maybe 30%. This is just to give you a darker background, essentially. Um, so, and if there's any noise that is left over, residual from your noise reduction step, you can subtract it this way as well. It's a, it's a nice way to get rid of more noise if you needed to. Um, the last thing we wanna do is I wanna saturate our lighter pixels a little bit more. So to do that, again, we're gonna stack everything once again, Shift, Option, Command, E, Shift, Control, Alt, E on a PC, and we are going to just Control or Command, click. Sorry, not what I meant. We're gonna go to the Channels section here and Command or Control, click on RGB, and that is gonna make a selection of the lighter pixels in the image. We are going to go back to the Layers panel, and with this layer still selected, we're gonna go up to the hue saturation adjustment and click on that guy. And that is gonna drop a lights mask. So we're using luminosity masks here on top of our uh, hue and saturation layer. So we're only adjusting the saturation in the lighter areas of the image. So we're going to increase the saturation here. Now again, this is just to taste, but I'll keep it up at about 40, 30, 40%, there we go. All right, so once we've done that hue and saturation layer um, that's here and you've gotten your saturation the where you want it in the lighter areas of the sky, um, if you wanted to just save this, you absolutely could. You could go up to file and save as and save it with all the layers. Um, since the process that we're doing here with Cyril and with Photoshop doesn't take a lot of time, um, you know, you're not spending a lot of time doing masking and lots of intricate work like on the nebula and all this kind of stuff. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I'm just going to flatten everything. So I'm gonna to go to layer, flatten image, and I'm gonna save it just like this. Um, file, save as, and we'll just save it just like this. I'll put a dash one here, because this is my process. All right, bring this over here no image compression, interleaved IBM, blah, blah, blah. All right, and there we go. And I can close this and close this. And here is my final image ready to go. Um, and I can you know, open this up in Lightroom or I can uh, open it back up in Photoshop and make a JPEG of it, print it, whatever you wanna do. Um, that is what I think is the most efficient way to process your astrophotography images. From ingestion to the computer to final product, I hope you agree. If you do, please leave a like and a comment down below. If you love what you see, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Until then, we're gonna sign off this one with clear skies. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time, bye-bye.